Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. It was the strangest advertisement Senor Fernando Romero had come across in a whole month of searching. Grandfather needed for a boy. Payment by agreement and a phone number. People have completely lost their minds. These wealthy folks have become shameless. Senor Romero exclaimed, moving the computer mouse over the page. Not only do they have personal nannies, drivers, cooks, and maids, but now they're even hiring grandfathers. And they actually find them, judging by how confidently they write about their need. The old man had been looking for work for several months already. He was completely impoverished with his pension. He had always been content with little and lived modestly. For him, this meager pension would have been sufficient, but not for Thunder. The elderly man was thinking more about the health of his faithful friend than his own well-being. The old, like Senor Romero himself, dog had long been in need of good medical care. The cost of veterinary services was terrifying to even think about. Moreover, in their remote area, there were no good veterinary clinics. Fernando's daughter Anna, a veterinarian, was a great professional and came to the rescue. But the consumables, now called all medical supplies, had to be purchased separately. Taking the huge old dog to the city required a taxi, and not every taxi driver would take an animal in their car. In short, for the elderly, especially those with dogs, it was difficult when they fell ill. Over the past few years, pet food prices had not just risen but had reached unimaginable levels. It seemed that it would be cheaper to raise a whole cow than to feed a dog or cat. And Thunder, a dog of impressive size, ate several times more than his owner. But Senor Romero didn't stop at just providing for himself and Thunder. He also fed the dogs abandoned by the summer residents because he felt sorry for them. Devoted to their summer owners, these unfortunate animals slowly perished with the onset of cold weather, unaware of the approaching winter. The kittens, which hadn't had time to grow before the frost, were the first to get sick. Meanwhile, their mother cats disappeared somewhere. Perhaps they survived on their own as best they could. With half-closed, dirty eyes, these abandoned kittens would emerge in the weak September sun and soak up the warmth in their fur, but only briefly. The cold, damp weather came, and one by one, the kittens disappeared. Adult cats were more viable. After all, nature had endowed them with hunting instincts. But they couldn't survive harsh winters either. Things were even worse for the dogs. True servants to humans, they had become accustomed to receiving ready-made food from their owners. Obtaining food in the abandoned village by autumn was simply impossible. The summer residents didn't keep chickens, and they didn't leave food for their sadly forgotten pets. That's how Senor Romero supported them to the extent his small pension allowed. He lived in his old country house. He had completely given up his city apartment to his daughter and who couldn't seem to settle down in her personal life. The old man didn't complain, he actually enjoyed living in the countryside. There was no rush, the forest was nearby, there was a river, and the air was clean, unlike in the city. The most important thing for an elderly person is peace and quiet. Adult solitude isn't a burden at all if you're in good health. In youth, the soul longs for friends, for a noisy company, for fun and dancing, for hourly, even minute-by-minute -minute communication. The personality absorbs the surrounding world, as if extracting from it through interaction what is most needed and important. But for a mature person, there is no need for so much noise. On the contrary, there are so many thoughts and images in their head, so many things to reconsider. And yet, life in this countryside would have been quite challenging for the pensioner if it weren't for the joys of civilization. The village had a constant supply of electricity, excellent mobile coverage, and, most importantly, the internet. Senor Romero would turn to search engines for any reason, read a lot, and study everything that interested him and had been beyond his reach before. He had always been inquisitive and couldn't spend a day without doing something. Now that he had retired for good, he was constantly thinking of ways to strengthen his finances, as he called his modest business and financial affairs. Over the summer months, all of the old man's savings had been depleted, and he decided to find some suitable work for himself. Don't think twice about it, 
his neighbor, the portly summer house owner Mateo, cheerfully told him, vigorously biting into a freshly picked apple from the nearby tree. Someone needs to guard the houses in the winter anyway. Go for it, it's an excellent job for you. The pensioner considered taking on the role of a guard, but it wasn't that simple. If in the past, old men worked in these positions, now young and strong guys from various security firms had taken over the easy work. In the evening, tired from his daytime wandering around the village in search of job opportunities, Senor Romero sat on the porch. The dog, nestled by his feet, rested its head on his lap. You see, Thunder, what's happening? What important things are they guarding there that these strong young men are assigned to these objects? The old man asked, stroking the dog's large head. They should be doing some hard work, but they're just sitting there. All they do is play on their phones. With a heavy sigh and a nod to bid farewell to his friend, he was accustomed to communicating with the dog as if it were a person. The old man entered the house to once again contemplate the day's future. In the morning, Senor Romero sat down at his old computer again and found a couple of phone numbers for organizations that were, as they say, within walking distance. The first one on the list was a construction company. A new complex was being built right between the city and the village where Senor Romero was currently living. It couldn't have been more perfect. Now all that remained was to secure the desired job and, with it, a salary. Good day. I'm calling about your advertisement. I would like to work as a security guard for you. Hello. What kind of work did you do before this? Why do you want to join security? How old are you? The questions came one after another. Apparently, there were many calls, and the set of questions had been prepared for any candidate and memorized by the inquirers to avoid thinking too long. I worked at a factory and retired. The female voice on the other end didn't let him finish. No, I'm sorry, we don't hire retirees. The call was disconnected. Senor Romero decided not to get discouraged and dialed the next number. Hello, is this a store? Are you in need of a security guard? Yes, we do need one. Did you serve in the army? A deep male voice asked from the other end of the line. Senor Romero's phone was mobile, but out of habit, he still considered that there was someone on the other end of the line. He couldn't help but smile. Oh, dear, when did I serve? You probably weren't even born yet. How old are you? The voice became suspicious. 62. Senor Romero sighed heavily but began to understand what was happening. I'm sorry, but we need security for valuable assets. We require young people who can use weapons and catch criminals. I don't think you're suitable for us. Wow, they're catching criminals. Senor Romero said to himself as he carefully placed the receiver back. No customers in the store, only criminals. It seems this young man has come from the police to an easy job. He shook his gray head and dialed the next number. It was a sports center, located not so close, almost on the outskirts of the city, a few kilometers away. Senor Romero would have been willing to walk there every other day, despite his painful legs, just to earn some money. Hello, are you looking for a security guard? He began. Oh, no, senor, we've already found one, a deep voice of a young man replied cheerfully. Our former coach just got hired. Sorry, senor, good luck to you. There was no other suitable job for seniors on the website. Senor Romero had to return to the strange advertisement that read, Grandfather needed for a boy. Something about that ad intrigued him. It was strange that everywhere he applied, they refused him as soon as they heard his age, and even his voice instantly revealed his age. But here, it was clearly stated that they needed a grandfather. He decided to make the call. Who knows what it might lead to? He needed to at least find out what the responsibilities of a grandfather entailed. The old man cleared his throat to make his voice sound less old and hoarse, and he dialed the number listed in the advertisement. A pleasant female voice answered. I'm listening. Hello, I'm calling about the advertisement. My name is Senor Romero. 
the invisible interlocutors seemed to become very animated. Hello. Thank you for calling. My name is Sonora Velasco. You must have found my advertisement a bit strange, right? Senor Romero could only awkwardly clear his throat on the phone. What could he say? Senor Romero, I would like to talk to you in person if you don't mind. Where do you live? Can you come to us? It's better if you come to me, Senor Romero said. I live. He explained in detail how to get to his village and his house. After hanging up the phone, he rushed to tidy up. His property was always well maintained, but inside the house, a woman's touch was lacking. He changed the tablecloth, picked up some items that shouldn't be seen by outsiders, even took a towel and wiped away the dust in some places. Then he washed up, shaved, put on his new tracksuit, and waited for Sonora Velasco. Exactly at the agreed-upon time, at six in the evening, a black jeep pulled up to Senor Romero's cottage. A tall, muscular man stepped out of it. He looked more like a bodyguard than a mere driver. Opening the door, the driver helped a petite, dark-haired woman in an elegant pantsuit, suitable for the office but not for traveling to a pensioner's house. Nevertheless, the lady confidently walked towards the cottage along the well-trodden path, already strewn with yellow leaves. Senor Romero approached the guests with a smile. Good day to you. Come inside, dear guests. Hello again. Sonora Velasco greeted in unexpectedly low voice and extended her small, strong hand. The driver nodded briefly and introduced himself. I'm Fernando too. His handshake was firm and as brief as his greeting. The host led the guests into the house and offered coffee and biscuits with jam. Coffee and a conversation go well together, he explained. I'd love to have some coffee, especially with homemade jam, Sonora Velasco added. And how about we have it in your garden? I saw a table with benches there. Oh, that's a great idea. Senor Romero exclaimed. He didn't want to show his not-so-appropriate interior to such an elegant guest, especially when the weather was as beautiful as it was for early September. The sun shone like in summer, and the evening was unusually warm and quiet, although, in the morning, it seemed like leaves had started falling from the large oak trees in the distance. Senor Romero had always drunk strong, fresh coffee, spiced with various herbs he grew himself. Today, we have coffee with mint, he commented as he poured the coffee into the cups. The jam is homemade too, from those cherries you see over there. There are still some left on top. Birds need cherries, too. The host also opened a box of beautifully wrapped cookies brought by the guests. Senor Romero had never tasted anything like them. Sonora Velasco seemed to appreciate both the sight and the aroma of the coffee and the homemade jam. She was enjoying the fresh air and the surroundings. Fernando, the driver, took his coffee cup and moved closer to Thunder, whom the host had warned was a bit reserved and that guests should treat him politely. The dog wagged its tail, and the guests turned out to be quite knowledgeable about canine psychology, so they also had a good time together. A warm conversation developed between the old man and the young woman. You see, Senor Romero, I specifically came to see you in your home environment. A person truly opens up at home. And you, a hospitable and industrious man, make a favorable impression. At first glance, everything about you suits me. You don't drink, and you look neat. Your house and garden are well-kept, which means your mind is orderly too. Tell me a bit about yourself. Oh, Sonora Velasco, my life can't be summed up in just a few words. The homeowner began with a melancholic smile. I've been living for a long time, you see. But you don't have to rush. I freed up my day from all responsibilities, and I have the whole evening. And you can take a break from your duties. My life, like that of all the men of my generation, was quite typical, Senor Romero started. I finished school and went straight into the army. You know how it was back then, right? It was considered shameful for a young man not to serve in the military. And the service was nothing like today. It was true soldiering. The officers were like fathers, really. 
After returning, I corresponded with my comrades for a long time. Some of us even remained friends for life. When I got back, I found a job at the factory. I worked as a milling machine operator for 43 years. It's a job that demands precision and accuracy, which suited my personality. And your family? Sonora Velasco inquired. Well, that's where I met my Paulina. She was just a little girl when I went into the army. She used to run around the neighborhood, and I didn't even notice her. But when I came back and saw her at the factory gate, I didn't even recognize her. Such a beauty. And what a golden character she turned out to have. She used to get jealous of me a little back in our youth, Senor Romero chuckled awkwardly. But what's the use of talking about it now? It was so long ago. We got married and lived happily. Senor Romero didn't like to lie and never deceived anyone. But there was a secret in his life, one he had to take with him. The only person initiated into this secret was his wife, his beloved Paulina Romero. In fact, she was the keeper of this very secret. She was also the reason for her husband's secrecy on this one matter. Back then, the young demobilized Fernando really met Paulina at the factory gate. They were standing in line to mark their passes. It was the time of the biggest gathering of workers before the shift change. Senor Romero struggled to recognize his little neighbor, the girl with wavy red hair and blue eyes who used to run to school with her backpack. He noticed her, remembered her, and in the following days, he started to spot her petite figure in the crowd. He didn't even notice how he started waiting for her involuntarily. At first, it was just to catch a glimpse of her, then he began to greet her with a nod and a smile. It progressed from there. The first exchanges of greetings began, conversations like we're going the same way, neighbor. Young people were drawn to each other unexpectedly. That's how it always happens when the heart longs for love. However, Paulina couldn't bring herself to look Fernando directly in the eyes. She always cast down a sad look, even though it was evident that she, too, was waiting for unplanned encounters on the way to and from work. Fernando started dropping by Paulina's home to invite her to the movies or dances. The girl shyly declined, but her mother, seeing Fernando as the son of good parents, often sent her daughter out with him. Go, go, no need to sit by the window wasting your youth. They went to the movies, danced, and ran to the distant woods for berries, and later for mushrooms. But Paulina became sadder with each passing day. One day, Fernando started talking about the future. Polly, when we get married, he began. And suddenly Paulina burst into tears, so desperately and vehemently that Fernando was taken aback. What's wrong, Polly? He hugged her. Did I offend you? Paulina broke free from his embrace, crying violently, wiping her red, swollen face with her fists, utterly inconsolable. He sat her down on the stump of a fallen tree, gave her some juice from a small hiking bottle, and remained silent. After calming down with difficulty, loudly blowing her nose into Fernando's handkerchief, Paulina muttered to herself as if talking to herself. We won't get married. We won't have anything, Fernie, I'm tainted. Fernando paused for a moment, not understanding what she had said, and then took her in his arms and started speaking. What nonsense, Polly. Where did you even find such a word? You're the best for me. He held her tightly and didn't let go until she started crying again. Only then, with her second bout of tears, did she manage to tell him about her misfortune, which had been tormenting her throughout those three summer months while she had been seeing the young man. By some terrible twist of fate, this tragedy had befallen the girl on the very eve of Fernando's return from the army. On a Saturday, the young people from their workshop gathered to celebrate one of the girl's birthdays, Leia. Paulina didn't know all the guys very well, but she had been friends with Leia for a long time. With her parents' permission, she went to a small country house where Leia had organized her celebration. At first, it was fun. They played, sang, and danced. Then several couples scattered around the plot and the nearby bushes. They went for a walk. Paulina, participating in such an adult celebration for the first time, felt very tired. She went up to the attic of the country house, 
took off her sandals, and lay down on the sofa to rest. She had visited Leia's house before and felt confident. The girl didn't notice when she fell asleep amid the distant conversations and shouts of the guests. Her sudden awakening was terrifying. Something heavy was pressing on her, and she couldn't even move or breathe properly. When she tried to free herself from the weight, Paulina felt rough hands covering her mouth and the stench of alcohol. Emilio. She realized with horror it was the new locksmith who had recently joined their workshop and had been pursuing her relentlessly since his first days at the factory. There were rumors that he had a shady past. The smell of alcohol often followed him on Mondays when he stood at the factory gate. Paulina was horrified and trapped beneath his long, heavy body. She couldn't do anything. She felt like a helpless little mouse caught in the clutches of a predator. Gasping for air, she tried to bite Emilio's dirty palm that covered her mouth, but in vain. Almost losing consciousness due to the lack of air, she wriggled and twisted, but it was too late. She realized she couldn't escape from her assailant. Then she heard Emilio's surprised voice. Wait, what? Wait, are you really a maiden? No way, a surprise. Just stay quiet, okay? No one will find out. Paulina almost indifferently composed herself and turned to face the wall. She spent the night in a daze, pretending to be asleep. In the morning, without showing that anything was wrong with her, she went home with everyone else. She noticed that Emilio and his friend Matteo were gone, probably off drinking somewhere. She didn't care. Paulina had detached herself from reality, with only her outer shell retaining the ability to smile, talk, and pretend to be alive. And when her mother started asking about the birthday party, she said, Yes, Mom, everything was very good. Paulina scrubbed herself in the bath with a harsh washcloth but couldn't feel clean enough. Emilio's dirty fingers haunted her on her pale skin, on her stomach, between her legs. The nights were torturous. And later, the girl realized that this wasn't the end of her ordeal. She found herself pregnant by the loathsome man. Now, she had to hide the morning sickness, bizarre food cravings, especially from her parents. She couldn't eat her favorite cheese, cottage cheese, or sour cream. In the last week, her clothes started to feel tight as her belly grew, no longer fitting into her girlish dresses and skirts. Paulina had been drawn to Fernando from their very first meeting, as if he were the only reliable support during these terrible weeks and months. The misfortune of her attacker and the happiness of rekindling her friendship with Fernando, her former neighbor, had become so intertwined in her life that it left her head spinning. Young Paulina was utterly incapable of taking control of the situation or making any changes. Fernando listened to the whole story with a surprising calmness that astonished the girl. Then he asked, with Emilio in mind, Where is he? I don't know, he disappeared somewhere. They say he often leaves and then comes back. Well, let's go to your parents and we'll decide about the wedding, Fernando simply said. We'll always have my side to rely on. A child is a blessing. Senor Romero couldn't tell this story not only to today's guest, but to anyone else in the world, including his beloved daughter, Anna. And he continued his tale. There was no time to relax. Soon, our daughter Ani was born. We were building this house while raising our daughter and planting our garden, and we didn't even notice how time flew by. Eventually, we received a flat from the factory. Since both spouses had been working for a long time, they gave us a comfortable, nice apartment in the city center. We lived modestly, of course, but we were not destitute. But still, a couple of times, we took into the seaside. Everything was just like other people. Why don't you live in the city apartment? Sonora Velasco asked. It would be more convenient for an elderly person. You have friends and relatives in the city, I suppose. And there's also a clinic nearby in case of any health issues. Since I buried my wife a couple of years ago, it became difficult for me there, Sonora Velasco, the old man answered, lowering his head. Everything reminded me of her. All our happy years together came flooding back. The longing consumed me. Besides, our daughter grew up. 
she's not having much luck with her family life. Her husband turned out to be unreliable and a heavy drinker. She left him while it was still possible, deciding it's better to live alone than waste her life with a drunkard. So, I decided to leave her there in our family apartment and move here. It's nice here. Senor Romero spread his arms and let out a deep, contented sigh. Here, I can always find something to do. In the summer, there are plenty of neighbors, and they often ask for help with various things. I'm quite in demand in the summer. I help someone with their car, someone with a fence or shed. Fix this, nail that. Men's hands are always needed in the village. And there's plenty of work in my garden, I grow everything I need. In the winter, it gets a bit boring, and I want to find some part-time work. And my dog Thunder, he needs good care and food. But doesn't your daughter visit you? Why doesn't she visit? Senor Romero was about to get offended. She does visit, tidies up, does the laundry, and so on. Sometimes she takes gifts from the land here. But she's always busy. She's a veterinarian by profession. Her love for animals started from a young age, maybe because of me. My daughter and I would always nurse fallen baby birds or adopt kittens. So, she decided to become a veterinarian to help our smaller brothers. And my thunder here, he's also one of those dogs that owners abandon when they go abroad. And does that happen? The guest was surprised. Oh yes, it does. There's no greater traitor than a person who tames an animal and then abandons it, Senor Romero angrily replied. You should see how many abandoned cats and dogs are left in our village when their owners move to the city. They take a temporary friend for the holiday, you see? And then off to the city. They couldn't care less about their friends from yesterday. But how are these animals supposed to survive in an empty village without human help? Senor Romero was getting visibly agitated, touching upon a sore subject. That's why I wanted to find a job. I have a lot of them here, loyal friends. They all want to eat. Ah, uh, I see now. Ekaterina exclaimed. Yes, that's it. When Anna, my daughter, saw thunder, she couldn't help herself. One day, very well-off people came to her clinic and asked to put the dog to sleep. A healthy, beautiful German shepherd. How could they just kill him like that? My Anna was speechless with indignation and horror. The dog's owner didn't want to hear anything. People like him, you see, only listen to themselves. Besides, the tickets for their trip abroad were already purchased, and they had no intention of canceling it. My Anna just waved her hand, not even looking at the money the owner left behind. How can you put a price on life and death? The owner just left, not even saying goodbye to the dog. So, Anna took thunder. She hoped to find a good home for him later. Dad, she asks me, take care of him for a couple of days, or maybe a couple of weeks. How could I refuse my daughter? I looked at the dog, and his eyes were so sad, as if he were asking, why did they treat me this way? Are you the same? Believe me, Sonora Velasco, I felt ashamed before him, not for myself, of course, but for his heartless owners. I realized that he was my dog right away. And now we spend our lives together, the two old men. Your daughter is wonderful, Senor Romero. The guest said, deeply moved. You raised her right. My pension is small, and thunder, and I don't have enough. So, I decided to look for work. Now, I have a question for you, Sonora Velasco. Why do you need a grandfather? I think, given your financial situation, you could hire nannies, tutors, or whatever they call them, governors, for the boy. The woman smiled with a warm and open smile. Well, my Roberto has not needed nannies for a long time. He's nine years old now. But we have a problem, Senor Romero. My Roberto is disabled. He uses a wheelchair. He was born a normal child. Everything was fine, but... I'll start from the beginning. Please, go ahead, Senor Romero prepared to listen. I'll start with a confession. Roberto was born without a father. Due to my demanding job and hectic schedule, I couldn't establish relationships with men. 
Some, seeing that my character, I must admit, is strong-willed, were afraid they'd spend their entire lives under my thumb. Strong women, you know, are often doomed to loneliness. Others, a certain type, just drooled over my possessions, dreaming of a carefree life for many years. So many years have passed in labor. It seemed that everything was flourishing in my professional life, but happiness in my personal life was nowhere to be found. I couldn't find a man I'd want to marry. So, I decided to have a child for myself. Well, that's your right, Senor Romero said. People's lives take many different paths. The most important thing is that you have a son. Of course, the woman agreed fervently. I was happy. Roberto's father, he doesn't even know about his son's existence. I decided that myself. The thing is, he's a family man, quite successful, a thriving businessman. I got to know him through work. We had joint projects. It's uncomfortable for me to tell you this. I'm revealing too much personal information. Maybe it's irrelevant to you. But today, I feel like being candid. Do you understand, Senor Romero? Of course, I understand, Senor Romero replied. Please, go on. Sometimes it's very important to talk to someone. Yes, there is such a need. I'm used to handling everything myself. My mother was no help in such matters. She probably wouldn't have approved of my decision to have a child out of wedlock. And this man. I thought he'd be suitable for a life together. He was so reliable, independent, and strong. But he had a wonderful family by that time. His children were already school age. I, under no circumstances, wanted to bring any grief to these wonderful people. Do you understand? Why would I want to ruin his already established family happiness? So, I decided not to tell him anything. I'd handle everything on my own. To avoid any problems that could interfere with our normal life, mine and my son's. Roberto was born so easily, I was as happy as I could be. Everything was fine. My business was developing rapidly. My mom and nanny helped raise the baby. So, the boy was born and grew up healthy? Her interlocutor asked. Yes, everything was going perfectly. When Roberto finished the first grade, I bought tickets for my mom and son to go on a vacation to the island so they could relax. That's where the trouble happened. In front of my little boy's eyes, my mother passed away. Unexpectedly. We didn't even suspect any illness. A heart attack. Roberto was in shock, under stress, and that's when his leg stopped working. Doctors can't find any pathology. We've consulted with every medical expert imaginable, but they couldn't determine anything specific. They all blame it on the child's stress. We've tried every doctor and healer. Nobody gives any prognosis. They all just throw up their hands. The cause seems purely psychological. Whether Roberto will walk again or not is unknown. Some neurologists say that, Perhaps, if he experiences another significant stress, he might suddenly start walking again. He needs a kind of push that could help him. But no one guarantees a positive outcome. And what if the next stress, on the contrary, worsens Roberto's condition? Yes, no one would risk it in such a case, Senor Romero agreed. That's why my son and I must be prepared for any turn of events. Roberto needs a lot of strength to become a real man, to feel like a complete person. And I want my child to have a future, to be able to continue my business and build a happy life for himself. Well, he seems to have a great example in front of him, his mother, the old man started to say. Oh, my dear Senor Romero, that's when I understand the meaning of the word fatherlessness. I was young, I didn't realize how the absence of a father would affect my son. It's not noticeable yet, but being surrounded only by women. You understand. The child is growing up pampered, seeing the world from a female perspective. Roberto needs a man with life experience around. Not the young men of today, who often grow up under their mother's skirt and then can't detach themselves from it, mommy's boys. They can't take responsibility for a family. No, my son was born apparently very sensitive and takes everything to heart. 
It's especially important for him to be strong, considering his disability. We need someone like you, Senor Romero. So, are you willing? I am willing, Senor Romero answered without hesitation. During their conversation, Sonora Velasco had completely opened up to the old man, and he couldn't help but empathize with her pain for her only son. Even more striking was the woman's openness, her complete vulnerability in front of a stranger, her priceless trust. Just like my little animal mates, Senor Romero thought, perhaps not entirely appropriately. How could he not justify such trust? The businesswoman immediately began planning their future cooperation. She quickly got up, took out a small notebook from her purse, and started jotting down notes. In the morning, Roberto has school-related activities, but by 2 o'clock, he will be waiting for you. A driver will pick you up, and you will be dropped off at home at 8 in the evening. Is this schedule acceptable for you? Yes, of course, it's quite acceptable, Senor Romero nodded. They then discussed the payment. The amount mentioned by Sonora Velasco turned out to be much higher than what the old man had expected. Senor Romero was taken aback and even shocked. Meanwhile, Sonora Velasco, rising from her seat, once again became a formidable and unapproachable businesswoman. This was outwardly reflected in her slightly more compressed lips, proudly raised head, and even her stature seemed to have grown taller. After bidding farewell, the woman left. Senor Romero was in such a state of tension that he was already preparing for a sleepless night. He was very tired after the long conversation. It had been a long time since he had empathized so deeply with another person's feelings. And he could hardly believe that he would receive such a significant sum for the job of being a grandfather. Well, Thunder, we'll be living well, he patted his beloved pet on the head. We'll find out what it's going to be like tomorrow. Old people often worry about various things. They tend to sleep poorly, whether it's after good news or bad news. Senor Romero was no exception to this rule, and after bidding farewell to his new acquaintance, he had a hard time falling asleep. He tossed and turned in his not-so-wide bed, envisioning the morning ahead. What did it have in store for him? How would he handle his new role as a grandfather? It was easier said than done. In reality, it was a very, very challenging task. Could he find common ground with the boy? Would Roberto enjoy communicating with a stranger old man? That was the task. Senor Romero never thought that in his old age, he would want to make a good impression on someone. Smirking at these unexpected thoughts, the old man turned onto his left side and finally fell asleep. He woke up early, as was his usual habit, with a sense of lightness and a good premonition in his heart. He immediately remembered. I'm going to work today. I'll meet that nice boy. He quickly prepared a simple breakfast, fed thunder, and cleared the table. He was ready on time. At the appointed time, a car arrived to pick up Senor Romero. The driver, Fernando, honked the horn and waved to Senor Romero from the window. Good morning, Senor Romero. Ready? Yes, Fernando, I'm coming, the old man replied, and, turning towards the dog's kennel, he instructed, Thunder, you stay in charge here. Keep things in order. I'll be back at eight, don't get too lonely. For the sake of formality, he locked the flimsy door and placed the key in the usual spot, known to both him and Anne. Then, he rushed down the porch. A black jeep quickly brought them to Sonora Velasco's house. Already at the entrance, it was clear that the neighborhood was very prestigious. A high fence enclosed some of the buildings, and they had to pass through closed gates with a security barrier, where a guard was stationed. Don't be shy, Senor Romero, Nanda smiled even wider. Although we have a lavish lifestyle here, our relationships are simple, everything is humane. You'll get used to it quickly, you'll see. Nanda approached the large open door to the rooms and called out loudly, Roberto, Senor Romero is here. A cry of oh, oh, oh echoed from the depths of the room. Then there was the faint squeak of wheels and a lightweight wheelchair rolled into the vestibule, carrying a slender dark-haired boy. 
He was easily recognizable as Sonora Velasco's son, with the same warm gaze of brown eyes and the same smile. But only someone who had the privilege of seeing the boy's mother in such openness as Senor Romero did during yesterday's conversation could notice the resemblance. The boy approached the guest and extended his hand with a smile. Hello, Senor Romero, I'm Roberto. The old man shook the boy's slender hand and said, Well, hello, Roberto. You can call me Senor Romero or just Uncle Fernando. All right, let's go. I'll show you my room, Roberto said and rolled forward, simultaneously telling about his home. The boy seemed genuinely happy about the new acquaintance and wanted to introduce his favorite places as fully as possible. Senor Romero watched Roberto attentively and felt like he was seeing himself in his childhood. He had no experience with boys and neither sons nor grandsons yet. But as he looked at the animated face of the child, he vividly remembered his own childhood. What interested him, and how could he engage this young acquaintance? Roberto, on the other hand, seemed not to think much about it. He eagerly showed the guest around his home. He even demonstrated his brand new computer. Do you use a computer? The boy asked. I have to, but mine is quite old, the man replied. Senor Romero watched with interest as Roberto quickly typed on the keyboard and entered words into the search engine. The first word he typed was router. Roberto wanted to show his grandfather the possibilities of Wi-Fi. All right, Roberto. Senor Romero hurried over. Explain to me again how I can connect to it. His daughter had given him a good smartphone for his birthday. Now Fernando, unlike many pensioners, was armed with the latest knowledge through the internet. But he didn't have Wi-Fi in his little house, so he was happy to learn from Roberto about its capabilities. The two men had discussed many things by the time Nanda called them to the table. They chatted on equal terms. Senor Romero didn't even have time to be amazed at how much Roberto knew. Engaged in lively conversation, they headed to the kitchen, where a table was set for two. Please, have a seat. Nanda greeted them warmly. It was clear that she was pleased to have a new face in the house. Invite our guest, Roberto. Nanda always feeds me a snack, Roberto explained. We have dinner with Mom later. It's in the evening. Mom always disappears to work. Sometimes she comes back very late, and I wait for her. That's when Nanda scolds us. How can I not scold you? You'll ruin your stomachs with such a lifestyle, Nanda grumbled good-naturedly. The child sits there hungry, he's boring to have dinner alone, and Sonora Velasco is all consumed by her work. She forgets everything. Can you believe it? Well, war is war, but lunch on time, as they say, Senor Romero chimed in. You, Roberto, need to grow, to eat properly. All the strength goes into growth at your age. It's the best time to build muscles. Really? Roberto was surprised. How do you build them? Is it to become like wrestlers or weightlifters? Well, my dear friend, it's about eating more meat, preferably with vegetables, Senor Romero replied. And do exercises, strengthen your arms and legs. The food should be well digested. Then he realized that he shouldn't have talked about arms and legs. But, looking at the interested face of the child, he continued. My daughter treats animals. She's a doctor, a veterinarian, you know. She treats cats, dogs, and even birds sometimes. She prescribes a diet for them, just like you said, to help them recover faster. Meat and vegetables, but of course, if the animal is a carnivore. He continued to share details from Ant's practice, seeing the young listener's keen interest. Roberto looked at him with wide eyes, never forgetting to chew his omelet with greens and sip cocoa. Nanda sat nearby, propping her chin with her fist, watching them with quiet affection, but then she suddenly realized. Well, it's nice to have you here, but someone still has to prepare dinner, right? And she went to the stove. Does your daughter treat horses? Roberto asked in the meantime. She does, why wouldn't she? Senor Romero replied. Last year, a circus came to town, 
and one of their horses got sick. She was being picky, refusing to eat anything, and then she got completely weak. But the show must go on, you know? What's a circus without performing horses? They have their routines, a team, you understand? Performances wouldn't work without each other. Did they bring it to your daughter? The boy's eyes widened. No, Roberto, Senor Romero shook his head. The poor horse wasn't up for traveling. She felt really unwell. My daughter came to them herself. She sat next to the sick horse, talked to her. I don't know what the horse told her, but my daughter understood that the horse's stomach wasn't working. And you have to imagine the size of a horse. To give it a laxative, it would probably take at least a bucket. I didn't ask for details, of course, but the horse came back to life in an instant. Just like that? The boy laughed. Yes, just like that, when everything ended well, Senor Romero replied. But the horse could have died because, guess what it swallowed that it shouldn't have? I don't know, Roberto pondered. Carrots? Potatoes? Well, it could have been carrots or potatoes, especially if it had eaten green potatoes that had been lying in the sun for a long time. But it was worse than that. The workers overlooked it and left a bucket near the young mare, the same bucket they used to wash the carrots. Along with the carrots, she managed to swallow a piece of the sponge. That sponge was the cause of the horse's illness. You, you, uh. Roberto said disappointedly. How could that happen? That's how it happens when someone is careless in their work, the old man shrugged. And why can't a horse eat green potatoes? Roberto asked. You see, under the sun, potatoes produce a very strong toxin called solanine, Senor Romero explained. You can't feed poisonous potatoes to anyone, neither people nor animals. It's very easy to get poisoned. Nanda, Nanda. Roberto suddenly shouted. Where's our potatoes stored? Not under the sun? Startled, Nanda couldn't quite understand what Roberto was asking about and replied off topic. All right, I'll prepare potatoes, Tito. Do you want them fried or boiled? No, I don't need potatoes right now. I'm just asking, are they not out under the sun? No, Roberto, Nanda was surprised by the question. We store them in the cellar. She looked questioningly at Senor Romero, but she didn't have time to chat, and once again, the men were left alone. Senor Romero carefully stacked the dishes in the sink. Well done, Roberto, you've eaten everything. Even my thunder wouldn't have anything left to lick. Who is thunder? Roberto asked. He's my dog. You could say he's my only companion in the house, Senor Romero replied. Don't you live with your daughter? The boy was surprised. No, my daughter works in the city. Her veterinary clinic is there, and her patients are waiting for her there. And Thunder and I live here, in the village, in our summer house. What kind of dog do you have? Does it live in the house or in the yard? Roberto was curious about everything. Well, it's not comfortable for a big dog to live in the house. Thunder likes his freedom. He has a huge yard to roam around in, and at night, I let him off the leash, and he wanders around the entire garden. He's a smart one. And brought him to me. Did your daughter give you the dog as a gift? Roberto was surprised again. Well, whether it was a gift or not, I don't know. You see, my daughter has been rescuing animals and birds and finding them new owners since she was a child. And this dog, some unkind people wanted to put him to sleep when they were leaving for abroad, you understand. They were going to live a beautiful life there, and the old dog was of no use to them anymore. So Ani asked me to take care of him for a while. And we, two old men, became such good friends that I can't imagine my life without him now. That's so cool. Roberto exclaimed. I've always dreamt of having a dog. But my mom says she can't handle it. She doesn't have the time, and Nanda doesn't either. They said that having a dog means playing with it, taking it for walks, and I. And he sadly pointed to his legs. Suddenly, the boy lifted his head, 
and a spark lit up in his eyes. Senor Romero, will you introduce me to Thunder? Well, of course, if your mom allows it. In the evening, Sonora Velasco arrived. She was very eager to find out how her son's meeting with his grandfather had gone. All day long, she impatiently watched the clock. There was so much work to do, and she wanted to go home. Barely waiting for Fernando to stop in front of the house, she got out of the car. Senor Romero, whom the driver was supposed to take home, was already prepared to leave. Roberto sat in his wheelchair next to him. His face lit up when he saw his mother. Mom, Mom, can I go to Senor Romero's tomorrow? Sonora Velasco was amazed. Wow, her son was already planning a visit. It meant that the introduction had gone well. She was incredibly pleased that the men had become friends. She warmly greeted Senor Romero and inquired about how their day had been. Great, Mom. Roberto said quickly, I learned about Thunder. I want to see Senor Romero's dog. Can I, Mom? His mother didn't recognize her usually reserved and quiet son. His face was red, his eyes were sparkling, and the expression of joy on his pale face pleased her the most. She laughed. Well, all right, all right, if it's not too much trouble for Senor Romero. Roberto, did you invite yourself over so boldly? Oh no, Sonora Velasco, Senor Romero stammered. I'll be delighted. And Roberto will really enjoy his time with me. I'm sure they'll become friends with Thunder. They agreed that in the morning, Roberto would go to his classes as usual, and at 2 o'clock, Fernando would bring him to Senor Romero's house. After bidding farewell to everyone and throwing a glance at the kitchen window where Nanda's silhouette was visible, Senor Romero got into the car, and Fernando drove away from the yard. Thunder greeted him with joyful barking, clearly missing him. Well, Thunder, now we'll work together, Senor Romero said, placing a bowl of food in front of him. I'll be the grandfather, and you'll be Roberto's pet. He's a good, kind boy. And smart, too. When I was his age, Senor Romero chuckled softly and waved his hand. He was so full of impressions that he didn't even feel like having dinner. Nanda fed us well today, he sighed. A woman's cooking, you know. After quickly sipping some apple juice and eating whatever was at hand, he went to bed. But before his eyes were the shining eyes of the boy, the mirrored walls of the magnificent house, and the arms of the beautiful Antonia. He smiled at these visions and sighed. It seemed that life was getting better. Senor Romero, as always when expecting a guest, began cleaning up in the morning, first around the house and then inside. He swept the already clean paths, tidied up around Thunder's kennel, and washed his food and water bowls. He didn't like this waiting time when it seemed like there wasn't much to do, but his heart kept pounding. Had he missed something? Where had he left things messy? To distract himself, he began sorting through his fishing gear. Being busy would make time pass more quickly, and it would calm his heart. After all, any event brought a lot of excitement to an elderly person. Fernando brought Roberto on time. It had only been half an hour since Roberto finished his classes. He easily lifted the wheelchair and placed the boy in it. Roberto, looking around and feeling nervous, started rolling down the path towards Senor Romero's house, but stopped abruptly. Thunder! He exclaimed. The dog looked directly at the boy with its intelligent eyes, perking up its beautiful ears. Thunder licked his lips, and Roberto burst into laughter. Well, Thunder, meet him, Senor Romero said to the dog. This is our Roberto, he's one of us now. You'll serve him just like you serve me, understand? He rolled Roberto's wheelchair closer to the dog. Here he is, Thunder, Roberto, get acquainted. The boy lifted his eyes to the dog. Can I pet him? Of course, you can, Senor Romero replied. The boy slowly reached out his thin little hand and, with a cautious motion, placed it on the dog's large head. Thunder! He sighed. The dog licked his hand and placed its head near the boy's legs. Roberto, leaning down, continued to stroke Thunder's thick fur. 
It felt to him like he could sit like this all day. But Senor Romero was already calling his guests to the table. Nanda sent them a treat, an apple pie, so the snack went very well. They sat where Sonora Velasco and the owner had recently been, at a table in the garden. Thunder watched them from his spot, squinting his intelligent eyes and wagging his tail. Roberto had a great appetite outdoors. After lunch, he even sighed deeply. Phew, I'm full. How about we go, fellow, to my daughter's veterinary clinic? Senor Romero suddenly suggested. Fernando, you'll be with Roberto until the evening, right? Yes, Sonora Velasco arranged it that way, the strong Fernando replied. Let's go. The weather is great, the day is going to waste. Come on, come on. And he began to help Roberto into the car with care. The boy only had time to shout. Goodbye, Thunder, I'll come visit you. The veterinary clinic amazed Roberto so much that he remained silent for a long time, just attentively listening to Anna's explanations. The girl wasn't expecting guests, but she was happy to see her father and his friends. This is how we work, she said, showing Roberto the treatment rooms, equipment, and beds for four-legged patients, as well as the special devices used to hold the animals in the right positions. We would like to renovate a lot of things, of course, but... The boy saw many animals receiving medical care. Anna also showed him the shelter where animals awaited their owners who had to leave them here temporarily. Roberto was particularly impressed by the section for abandoned animals and birds, those whose previous owners had abandoned them. There were also those who were found and brought in by compassionate passers-by. After all, the doctors provided them with care, but they couldn't find permanent homes for these pets yet. So the poor creatures had to stay in a small adapted room, where it was dark and quite cramped. Unfortunately, we don't even have money allocated for these fellows, Anna said with a heavy sigh. We feed them with what we can, it's heartbreaking. The boy was so impressed by what he saw that he rode home in silence. When he was brought home, he eagerly awaited his mother. Finally, Sonora Velasco entered her son's room with a smile. So, what news do we have today? You know, Mom, I've been waiting for you so much, her son said. I wanted to ask you for permission. Can I give my money to feed the animals? Wait, what animals? The woman was surprised. There, at Anna's veterinary clinic, Anna Romero's. The animals there have nothing to eat, you know? They don't allocate money for their food, that's what Anna said. The boy talked to his mother for a long time about his impressions, about thunder, about the abandoned animals. Sonora Velasco looked at her son, and her heart was warm. She didn't expect her child's heart to be so kind. You want to help them? She finally asked when Roberto finished his story. Yes, I broke my piggy bank. There's a lot of money there. What do I need it for? I already have everything, Mom. Right? Right, his loving mother replied and stroked the whirl on his head. You have a kind heart, my boy. I'm really proud of you. So, can I do it? The child's eyes lit up. Well, of course, you can. After all, it's your money. You can spend it as you see fit. And it's a good cause. Sonora Velasco was amazed by her son's independent decision. She could see that the boy was in high spirits. And all of this happened in just two days of getting to know Senor Romero, she thought. No, I made the right choice. A man with priceless life experience, an honorable person, this is how it should have turned out. I made the right choice for a grandfather. Meanwhile, Senor Romero was also greatly impressed by the recent days of his life. His routine had changed significantly, his circle had expanded. New good people appeared around him. But most of all, he was delighted with his interaction with Roberto. It was so easy for him to be with Roberto. He felt like he was back in his distant childhood when everything was easy and simple. They chatted, played, communicated with each other, and needed no one else. How could you get paid for something like this? The next day, 
After a day of work, Senor Romero went straight to his employer as soon as she got out of the car. Senora Velasco, I got a little confused and didn't ask what exactly my responsibilities are, he said to her. We're just talking and having fun with Roberto. I can't get paid for that, can I? Oh, Senor Romero, you don't have any specific responsibilities. Come to us not as an employee, but as if you were with your own close family, if possible. Communicate with Roberto the way you would with your own grandson. Well, he's been like my own from the very first minute, Sonora Velasco, the old man, hurriedly replied. I feel comfortable with him, but... That's the most important thing, the woman interrupted him. Roberto really benefits from having a male influence. Look at how decisively he handled his savings, a real young man. And she burst into happy laughter. Senor Romero breathed a sigh of relief. Three months passed since Senor Romero took on the role of a grandfather. With each passing day, he grew more attached to the boy, and Roberto responded to the old man in the same way. The housekeeper, Nanda, could only smile as she watched them. A single woman herself, she had long been living her life through the interests of this foster family of hers, and she loved Roberto just as much as if he were her own grandson. Life had not been kind to her. Her husband had been a heavy drinker and a cruel man, and their child had died in infancy. In the end, Nanda had fled from her husband and found a place in this stranger's home, which had become like her own. And now she was pouring all her and used maternal warmth onto the lady of the house, Sonora Velasco, who reminded her of her younger self, lonely, strong, but so eager for warmth and love. When Senor Romero appeared in the house, Nanda's keen eyes quickly discerned an honest man in him. Modestly dressed, he still noticed the small tasks that required a man's strength. He would lift, fetch, and fix whatever was needed. Nanda had caught herself more than once gazing with pleasure at the man's thin face and thinking, if only I had a husband like him one day. But then she would snap out of it and scold herself, look at the young lady daydreaming. However, the heart wants what it wants. And again, she tried to treat the man to something especially delicious. Besides, her favorite Roberto, next to Senor Romero, seemed to have acquired a wolf's appetite, which delighted her immensely. She started preparing larger portions to wrap up the leftovers and send them with Senor Romero. It's a shame to let the food go to waste, Senor Romero. Please, take it with you and have it for dinner. Cooking can be quite a hassle. He felt embarrassed, even blushing slightly, but he didn't dare refuse the treat. He was especially considerate with her the next day when he arrived with Roberto for a snack. Now, Senor Romero accompanied Roberto everywhere to the swimming pool, where the boy had individual lessons, to the rehabilitation center, and on walks. They never got tired of each other and always found topics to discuss. Sometimes, when Senor Romero had a day off, Roberto would call him and ask him to come over. Senor Romero believed that he shouldn't be too proactive without the host's agreement, so he would say, Roberto, you're a young man, you should understand that thunder misses me, he would say in response. And there are some household chores that have piled up. Why not? Roberto would insist. If I could come over to your place, I would help you, and I'd play with thunder. He wouldn't be bored then. On the last weekend, the boy asked him directly, Senor Romero, can I come to your place? Of course, come over. If your mom allows it. Senor Romero breathed a sigh of relief. And his mom not only allowed it, but also drove Roberto herself, taking Nanda along. Senor Romero could only croak with embarrassment. Roberto and his mom went for a walk, then Sonora Velasco decided to take a stroll to the nearby forest while Nanda began cleaning the house. No matter how much he insisted, she would smile, wash, scrub, and say, It's been a while since there were women's hands here, so, Senor Romero, allow me to tidy things up. And you, entertain the guests. The bright winter sun was starting to warm up, so the adults weren't worried about Roberto catching a cold. Thunder played happily with the boy, forgetting about his elderly ailments. Roberto also had limited opportunities, so the two of them were perfectly content in each other's company. 
As always, after some fresh air, the boy ate boiled potatoes with gusto, dipping them in melted butter. Senor Romero even allowed himself to brag. Well, how are these potatoes from our garden? Crumbly, right? And the butter is from the neighbor. Pure cow's butter. I stock up on it every fall. Enjoy. It's a natural product, not some overseas synthetic stuff. Sonora Velasco even closed her eyes in delight. It tasted so good. The day off went wonderfully, she said, finishing dinner. Thank you, Senor Romero, for your hospitality. It's time for us to leave, and Nanda has already finished cleaning, Sonora Velasco said. Mom, it's so great here. Can I stay overnight at Senor Romero's place? I'll leave, and Thunder will miss me. The boy's eyes sparkled, and his cheeks were flushed. His mother could see how happy her child was in the company of the old man and Thunder. Sonora Velasco, let Roberto stay. Tomorrow is Sunday, and Fernando can come pick him up. If you don't trust the old man, let Nanda stay too. There's enough room for everyone, Senor Romero supported the boy's request. Roberto looked so pleadingly at his mother that she started to think. That's when Nanda also added her weighty opinion. Sonora Velasco, if needed, I'll stay. Let the little one have fun in the fresh air. He's always in the city. And tomorrow evening, you can send a car for us. What should I do with you? Stay then, you cheeky guests. Sonora Velasco laughed. From that day on, Roberto staying overnight at Grandpa's place became quite common. It became a habit for Roberto to spend almost every weekend with Senor Romero. Sometimes, Nanda would also stay overnight to cook a good meal for the two men. But this happened very rarely because her main job required her presence in the large household. The bond between the old man and the boy was so strong that they never got bored, and Thunder made sure they weren't lonely either. Spring arrived. On one of the weekends, while observing Senor Romero once again sorting through his fishing gear, Roberto became interested in the unfamiliar items. What's this? And this? And how do you fish with a jig? He asked Senor Romero. He patiently and even gladly showed Roberto everything and explained the intricacies of fishing. Wow. The boy's eyes lit up. I've never been fishing before. Senor Romero understood it was time. If he supported this budding interest in time, it would be a gift for Roberto for the rest of his life. But if he missed this moment, he might never become a young fisherman. Well, how about tomorrow? He said without any solemnity. Let's go to bed, and tomorrow at five in the morning, let's meet the sunrise by the river. Roberto gasped. Really? If we wake up and go, then it's true, right? We are our own masters, after all, Senor Romero replied, trying not to reveal his excitement. Yes, he was excited. The boy wasn't used to hardships. It would be a damp morning, with cool and humid air. It was unknown if he would enjoy all of this. But it was said and done. They woke up on time, quickly got ready, and set off. Nanda grumbled while helping Roberto into Senor Romero's warm old jacket and stuffing a bag with food for them. Then she secretly crossed Roberto and his wheelchair. This was Roberto's first fishing trip. They couldn't go far with the wheelchair, so they decided to fish in a pond about 500 meters from the road. The old man explained in detail how to fish properly, how to put worms on the hook, and how to cast the line. The morning dawn was good for fishing, and Senor Romero started pulling in one fish after another. Roberto awkwardly swung the long and unwieldy fishing rod. But soon, he got lucky too, he had a bite. He froze, staring at the float, then looked at Senor Romero. The old man gestured silently, reel it in. The boy pulled the fishing rod, and in the air flashed a small, silvery fish. Hooray! Senor Romero quietly shouted, and Roberto immediately joined in. Hooray! The joy of catching his first fish was greater than getting a new phone for Christmas. The fishermen got caught up in the excitement and didn't notice how time flew by. Soon, they had quite a good catch in their bucket. 
Senor Romero was pleasantly surprised that Roberto didn't show any signs of weakness. He patiently swatted away mosquitoes, which became annoying with the warmer weather. He didn't complain when the fishing hook got tangled in his hair. Overall, he was a resilient little man. On that day, Nanda cooked a royal fish soup using her signature recipe, and they grilled the rest of the fish on the barbecue. The men did everything together, from building a fire to cleaning the fish. Despite the fatigue and his lack of experience with such demanding work, Roberto had no intention of giving up. Cooking the fish over the fire was also a first for him, and he was proud to be truly helping the adults. He enjoyed inspecting his work-worn calluses and fingers scratched by hooks. Maybe he won't become a fishing enthusiast, but this joy will stay with him for life, Senor Romero thought. And Nanda, watching her favorite boy devouring the fish soup, rejoiced at Roberto's strengthened health and rosy cheeks. The summer days passed one after another, and Roberto got tanned and grew stronger. Nanda laughed, remembering how she used to struggle to come up with a special dish for the boy before this summer. But now, he ate everything and even asked for seconds. A healthy spirit in a healthy body. Fernando, the driver, exclaimed, sensing Roberto getting stronger. He had to constantly lift both the child and the wheelchair to load them into the car. He could definitely tell how much his ward weighed before his walks with Grandpa and how much he weighed now. Autumn was approaching again. One Saturday evening, Nanda and Roberto came to Senor Romero's place again to escape the city noise and enjoy the last warm days. Nanda and Senor Romero had long stopped hiding their mutual affection. The woman, without any embarrassment, came to help in his bachelor household, cooking even more delicious dishes. It was a quiet and peaceful evening, and there was no sign of trouble. However, age sometimes brings unexpected and unpleasant surprises. In the evening, Senor Romero suddenly felt unwell. Shortness of breath came out of nowhere, and his head started spinning. To avoid causing panic in Nanda, who was prone to excessive worrying, he quietly beckoned Roberto. Roberto, something doesn't feel right. Maybe my blood pressure went up. We won't make a fuss so as not to scare Nanda. I'll go take my medicine and lie down, and you go feed Thunder. After I rest for a bit, we'll have dinner together. Roberto nodded understandingly and wheeled his way to the dog's kennel. He fed Thunder, absentmindedly scratched him behind the ear out of habit, and had a little chat with his four-legged friend. It was time to check on Senor Romero. When Roberto entered the old man's room, he saw Senor Romero lying on the bed. The man's eyes were closed, and one arm hung down to the floor. Roberto was frightened. It seemed to him that the old man wasn't breathing. Grandpa Fernando, don't die. The boy cried out. Without thinking, he quickly jumped up from the wheelchair and took a few steps towards Senor Romero, but the tension of being right by the bed made him fall to his knees. Senor Romero was horrified. Dear God, Roberto, what happened? He exclaimed, picking up the boy and pulling him from the floor. Roberto both cried and laughed. I got scared. I thought you, you died. There, there, Roberto, don't cry, everything is fine. Nothing will happen to me, okay? Maybe the medication had such an effect, and I dozed off. But did you walk to me by yourself? I don't know, maybe. I don't remember, I was really scared. Senor Romero sat on the floor, holding the child close, and couldn't understand anything. Could Roberto have been so stroked by fear that he managed to take independent steps? He believed it and didn't believe it at the same time, but for now, he was afraid to test his theory. Roberto sobbed one last time and looked up at him. Grandpa Fernando, please don't tell mom that I cried, he said, feeling embarrassed. Of course, my dear, I won't tell her. But did you cry at all? I didn't see any tears, Senor Romero replied. Senor Romero hugged the boy's blonde head to his chest and discreetly kissed the top of it. The boy's concern touched him deeply. Meanwhile, a frightened Nanda appeared at the door, having rushed over to Roberto after hearing his cry from the far corner of the garden. What's going on here? 
she exclaimed, poking her head into the doorway. Is everyone okay? What's the matter? We're tough guys, practically heroes. Senor Romero replied with a smile. He gently moved Roberto away from him and suggested, Come on, let me lift you up, and we'll try to take a few steps. Don't be afraid, Roberto, I'll hold you. The old man lifted the boy from the floor and supported him as Roberto firmly planted his feet. Nanda stood by, tense but silent. Well? Senor Romero quietly ordered. Nanda remained tense but patiently kept quiet. And Roberto took his first step. Even though his grandfather held him with both hands and it was just one step, he did it himself. Roberto broke out in sweat, his face turned red, and his eyes were fixed on his feet as if he were hypnotizing their movement. Senor Romero gently pushed him forward and the boy took another step, then another. And now the old man slowly led him around the small room, his arm supporting the boy. After taking a few steps, Roberto looked at his grandfather with a twisted, hard-earned smile as if he couldn't believe it himself. Then, with uncertainty and supported by Senor Romero, he took a few steps towards the exit. Oh my lord, Roberto. Nanda, who had been standing in the doorway, hugged him tightly with both arms and pressed him against her warm chest. The woman cried and kissed the boy with her wet lips, then pulled his head away from her and, startled to see him standing nearly eye to eye with her, on his own two feet, she cried again with joy. Everyone was shaken, in great excitement, dropping things and muttering about their emotions. Nanda set the table, and the men, who were silently digesting the emotions of the past few minutes, smiled at their thoughts. Finally, hot coffee helped everyone calm down and relax. Together, they began to recall what had just happened, trying to make it seem funny or amusing. Needless to say, the feelings that overwhelmed these three close people when they finally went to sleep in the small house amid the greenery of the garden were indescribable. As expected, the hero was tired after the unaccustomed walk. Even though it was only a dozen or so steps, it felt like a cosmic journey to him. So the little hero fell asleep with a happy smile on his face. Senor Romero, as always, worried about Roberto's future. Would the child be able to overcome his fear? Would he walk confidently and decisively? Would this desire to walk remain a remission? He tossed and turned for a long time, remembering his own fear, then smiled again, seeing Roberto's frightened face once more. Ah, uh, old age, you don't let to sleep in peace. Well, Nanda, out of her eternal female habit, fervently prayed for her beloved Roberto, asking the Lord for mercy, and secretly admired Senor Romero. If it weren't for him, none of this would have happened with little Roberto. It's him, Fernando, who helps the boy find strength. And right away, she shyly hid her face in the pillow after accidentally calling him Fercho. In the morning, everyone remembered yesterday's joy. Roberto couldn't wait to start walking again. In the evening, the adults had warned him not to attempt walking on his own in the morning. Your leg muscles are still very weak. It's dangerous. In the first few days, you need to take it easy, Senor Romero explained. Make sure to wait for me. We will only walk together. Roberto promised. He could barely wait for breakfast to finish, even though he ate less than usual. Come on, eager beaver, we're going now. Senor Romero smiled at him. Thunder watched in surprise as his two owners, big and small, intertwined into one four-legged creature, passing by his kennel repeatedly. Walking on the ground was not easy for Roberto. It seemed like the path was intentionally shifting under his feet, making it difficult to walk. The boy broke into a sweat and panted, but he kept telling Senor Romero, Let's go. He trained so persistently that after lunch, he didn't even object when Nanda laid him down in the shade on a wide bench. The happy boy fell asleep in the fresh air, with only his cheeks flushed with a healthy rosy color. Meanwhile, the old couple sat together, admiring the sleeping child, and quietly talked about themselves. What happiness God had given them, how wonderful it was to not be alone in their old age, how great today was in the garden. Of course, they didn't talk about everything, there was something secret they still remained silent about. 
Finally, Sunday evening arrived. The anticipation of Sonora Velasco's arrival filled the house. Eventually, her black jeep stopped near the cottage gate. Opening the gate, the woman saw that Roberto's wheelchair was empty and lonely off to the side. Down the path leading to the house, Roberto was cautiously walking. Senor Romero was carefully supporting him while the enormous thunder leaped alongside them, forgetting his advanced years. Ekaterina stood in silence and cried, afraid to disturb their idyllic moment. She even managed to hold back her cry of joy and waited until her son approached her on his own. Then there was coffee, stories about yesterday's events, and discussions of every little detail that came to mind. Excited Roberto dreamed about how, now that he could walk, he would go fishing, then into the woods to pick mushrooms, and so on. His dreams knew no bounds. Wait a minute, Roberto. Senor Romero slowed him down. Remember what Anna said about weakened wings of birds that don't fly for a long time in the clinic? It's the same with you. Your legs have been immobile for too long. Now the main thing is not to harm them. Your mom should show you to the doctors. They will advise on the fastest way to regain their strength. And then we can go anywhere you want. Finally, it was time to head home. When the boy got into the car, Senor Romero said to Sonora Velasco, It seems I'm not needed anymore. Roberto definitely needs to see a doctor urgently. Although I can tell you, even without doctors, that everything will be fine for him. The old man felt a little sad. He wouldn't be going to see his ward every morning now. Tears were ready to well up in his eyes. Sonora Velasco warmly embraced him. Don't talk nonsense, Senor Romero. How could we do without you? I simply have no words to express my gratitude to you. You've not only become a grandfather to my son, but also replaced a father I don't remember. You'll forever be a part of our family. Well, you're like family to me too, the old man said, discreetly wiping his eyes. He waved goodbye to the car for a long time, knowing that the young woman would call him tomorrow and invite him over. Antonia, holding Senor Romero by the arm, slowly walked along the leaf-covered path to their house. Today, they had once again visited the cemetery where Paulina Romero, Senor Romero's wife, rested. On the day of her death, Antonia had carefully tidied up the grave of the woman she had never known. But based on her daughter Anna, she reasoned that Paulina must have been a kind and compassionate woman. Otherwise, how could Anna have grown up so warm-hearted and hard-working? It's a shame that her daughter didn't have a family and children, Senor Romero always lamented. She remained alone with her beloved animals. You, Furcho, don't upset God. Nanda comforted him. What can you do? Not everyone is blessed with the joy of having children. Look at me, I've essentially lived a life as an empty shell. And you, Nia, are still quite blossoming for me, the old man smiled and reached out to hug his friend. Imagine that, an empty shell. What would I do without you? They became friends immediately from the first days of their acquaintance and then they lived together to ease two solitary lives. At first, Nanda would stay on weekends, but as she grew older, a young assistant took her place in Sonora Velasco's big house and she permanently moved into Senor Romero's cottage. They were peaceful and happy together. The two of them leisurely managed the garden, trying to delight children with apples and ripe plums. Alongside Anna, Sonora Velasco, and the grown-up handsome Roberto, they had long been considered part of the family. Throughout these years, Senor Romero's life was not just alongside his new family, Ekaterina, Roberto, and Nanda, it was closely intertwined with them. Sonora Velasco had suggested many times for him to move into her home, even proposing to build a small annex in the same yard so he wouldn't have to commute. But the old man held on to his independent views on everything, especially now that he wasn't alone. He was fortunate to meet Antonia, who had no reservations about sharing her life between two men, Roberto and her Furcho, as she always called him. Anna was incredibly happy that her father wasn't alone. She quickly became friends with Auntie Nanda, as she started calling her new, albeit not young, wife. 
The old couple didn't bother with formalities like getting married. What was the point of such displays of affection? Their goal was to avoid unnecessary attention from others. They were content with quietly living side by side, having each other as companions on gloomy days, sunny mornings, or sleepless nights. Anna visited them less frequently now because she had taken to touring the country. The old couple's cottage was filled with magnets, souvenirs, all sorts of embroideries, and rugs from different parts of the world. Over the years, Roberto grew up, graduated from school and college. No one would have guessed that this handsome young man had once been a disabled child who had spent several years of his childhood confined to a wheelchair. At the beginning of his career, he underwent an internship at Sonora Velasco's company. His mother wanted him to gain his initial experience under her supervision. However, after receiving his diploma, her son decided not to work alongside her. No, mom, no, he firmly stated. I don't want to be mommy's little boy, that's the first thing. You understand me, right? His mother couldn't resist his disarming smile. Well, let's suppose I do, but I would stop monitoring you so closely, she weakly objected, fully aware that in reality, she couldn't help but get involved in her son's work. What mother could resist? And the second reason? I'm not interested in your field, mom, you know that. I've always dreamed of internet technologies. What should I do now? Forget about my dream? Sonora Velasco, of course, agreed. She remembered herself well in her youth. She never knew how to submit to someone else's will. She did everything against the odds just to get what she wanted. Maybe that was the secret of her success. Well, she wouldn't stand in her son's way. Let him build his life the way he liked. He was a grown, independent man. Roberto really wanted to achieve everything on his own, just as Senor Romero had once instructed him. Sonora Velasco, who believed in neither God nor the devil, only sighed and silently cast away any superstitions to avoid jinxing her son when she saw his determination bordering on stubbornness. Her weak boy, who had suffered so much from intense emotions in his early years, had quietly grown stronger both physically and spiritually, all thanks to the life lessons he had received from the old, unassuming man, Senor Romero. Ekaterina thanked fate for receiving some magical guidance that summer. Her son needed a friend, a mature man, experienced and decent. Thus, two people entirely unrelated to each other became close and essentially became one family. When Roberto left his hometown, he didn't leave his grandfather Fernando behind. He made sure to get him a good computer, and now Senor Romero was more tech-savvy than some young people. Together with his mother, they also organized a renovation in the house where the two of them now lived. Life for Nanda and Senor Romero had become quite comfortable. Catalina also found her destiny at an exhibition of young artists and got married. Hello. A voice came from behind the gate. Are you receiving guests? Oh, Lena. Senor Romero exclaimed with joy. Nanda, put the kettle on, Lena and Raul have arrived. We didn't just come for a visit, a joyful Sonora Velasco said. We brought you an invitation. Roberto's wedding is coming up. She handed Senor Romero an envelope adorned with two doves. Behind her, the silent giant Raul smiled, who had become friends with the residents of the cottage and the young shepherd dog Nova, who they had taken in after Thunder's death. It turned out that Roberto had met a good girl and proposed to her. And now there were joyful preparations, gift buying, and dressing up for the wedding. Well, Sonora Velasco said, finishing her delicious coffee with Senor Romero's signature dried herbs. Tomorrow, we'll come pick you up at this time. We need to buy beautiful outfits. Oh, but we're old folks, they both protested. Sonora Velasco waved her hand to silence them. Nonsense. Our Roberto should have the most beautiful relatives. Do you agree? Otherwise, it's embarrassing. What will the bride's family think? The elderly couple sighed. Indeed, they shouldn't embarrass the young man. Senor Romero and Nando were among the most honored guests. Allow me to introduce you. 
These are the two most important people in my life. Roberto introduced them to the bride and the in-laws. My grandfather, Senor Romero, to him I owe my character, strength, and health, and this is Nanda, my nurturer and caregiver. Well, almost a nanny. And now she's also a grandmother by association since she's the wife of my grandpa. I'll tell you lots of good things about them. Senor Romero and Nando were initially bashful, casting furtive glances at the beautiful bride and their beloved Roberto. But soon, they felt at ease and fully embraced the celebration. The guests had fun, raised toasts as tradition dictated, wished the young couple eternal love, family happiness, and many children. Nanda, as usual in such cases, cried tears of joy, while Senor Romero just grumbled, brushing away an uninvited speck from his eye. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.